story you're about to see will be startling, but it's based on a true experience. Something unexplainable from behind the veil. You know, the world of a teenage girl can be full of wonder and delight. But not always. Sometimes it can become a place of confusion, terror. And that's just Keep what happened eyes. to Ruth Cooper. Just keep looking up at the corner of the ceiling. What about your arm? It still hurt? Did nothing hit you there? No. You didn't bump your head? No, it just feels kind of... Uh -huh. All right, you can get up now. You go along with the nurse. She'll take some pictures. Dr. Madison, what is it? She appears perfectly normal. But why doesn't she know me? Her own mother. There was nothing unusual about her before this morning? Nothing. She was perfectly all right when we left Chicago yesterday. Nothing on the train or in the hotel last night? Not a thing. Hmm. Well, maybe the x-rays will tell us something. What about her father? He's been dead for eight years. Oh, I'm sorry, Ellie. I didn't know. I've tried to do everything I could for her. That's why this is so awful. I'm sure you have. She's a fine-looking girl. She reminds me of Ellie Hudson, the last time I saw her. No. I was older when I left Greenville. Ruthie's not even 16 yet. I know how hard this must be for you, Ellie. You'll do everything you can for her. Of course I will. Tell me about you. Is this your first visit home? In 20 years. I told Ruth all about Greenville. I wanted her to see the place where her mother was born. Why don't you wait in the outer office for a while? I'll talk to Ruth some more. Thank you. Well, why don't you sit down here? And now I'll have your photo in my album, too. I already have your mother's. You know, when she was a girl. My mother? Oh, you mean Mrs. Cooper. Doctor, who is that woman? Well, I knew her some time ago. She used to live in Greenville, too. But why am I staying with her? She's uh, someone who likes you very much. Oh. Can you tell me who I am? Are you able to remember anything? Well, Mrs. Cooper told me that I'd never been to Greenville before. But on the way to your office, I... well, somehow it, it seemed familiar. In what way? I felt like, like I was coming home. Do you have any idea where home is? Not really. I just keep feeling that I've got to do something, but... I mean, it's like, it's like when you're hungry, but you don't know what you want to eat. Doctor, am I losing my mind? No. If you were, you wouldn't be asking me that question. Now, try not to worry. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me? This morning, when I woke up, I know this is going to sound funny, but I, I heard a voice, uh -huh. a girl's voice, calling me from far away, calling some name. What did the name sound like? I don't know. Well, I couldn't tell. I, 
I mean, we're so very far away. <laughs> well, it was probably Mrs. Cooper trying to wake you. Sleep fools us all the time. I'd like you to go back to the hotel now with Miss Cooper. It's her, but why? Because she wants to help you, too. All right? You just rest, be quiet. We'll talk more later. Will you do that for me? Sure, I will. Thanks, Uncle Dar. Hello? Yes, Dr. Madison. This afternoon? Yes, yes, we can be ready. All right, here we are. That tree there. And that fountain at the side of the house. In the springtime, there were always so many birds that we... Please, Ruthie. Hello, Ira. This is Mrs. Cooper and her... Well, the people I thought you and Martha would like to meet. Mr. Perry. How do you do? How do you do? Ruth? We'll find Martha in the living room. Oh, your leg seems worse again. You're Mrs. Cooper? Uh, yes. Oh, do come in, please. Thank you. Well, how's your golf, Ira? My, after 20 years. You must see a great change in Greenville. You know, we love this little town, but I wish I could see it through fresh eyes again like yours. <laughs> Well, I really haven't had a chance to look around very much, but I'm sure Ruth is going to love it. Ruth, dear, I, I was just telling Mrs. Perry that I'm sure you're going to love Greenville. Oh, yes, I love this town. Well, how charming. Most girls your age would prefer the excitement of a big city. And Chicago is a fascinating place. You know, the last time I was in Chicago was five years ago. Maybe we'd better not leave Peggy's picture around. Well, I don't think Martha will let anybody change that. Frightened? No, but perhaps I don't know exactly what you mean. Oh, no, no, frightened. Frightened is the wrong word. Awed is a better word. Hello, Jasper. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. How have you been? Why, Duffer acts as though he knew her. Of course. Dogs often react that way to people who like them. I can't explain any of this, Ira. Did you tell her his name? No. Then how did she know it? I have no idea. You remember the nickname that your daughter used to call me? Yes. Four hours ago in my office, this girl called me Uncle Dar. Nobody ever called me that but Peggy. Could they possibly have met before? Before Peggy died? No. She's never been here before. I... My I don't know how to... No. Well, I'm... I'm afraid, dear, it, it isn't yours. It... It was given to my own little girl years ago. Why, look at her arm. Oh, Mother, when was it broken? Has the girl any chance of recovery? Yes, she has a chance. But I think a great deal may depend on you and Martha. Oh, no. Ira, I would like her to come and stay here with you for a while. You live here? Yes, I think it's important. I think it may help to reduce her anxiety, her uncertainty. But how? Is it some sort of treatment? Well, it's, it's one approach. You saw how she reacted to Martha and you, the dog, the ballerina. She seems to be following a definite pattern. In some cases, it's the only thing that's helped. Come on, sit up. Come on, come on. 
I'm different. Come on, boy. You're asking me to do a very difficult thing. I should have to know some more about those other cases. Let's go inside. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Come on, turn around. <laughs> this dog always has had a mind of his own. We're used to that around here. You mean because I have a mind of my own, too? I wasn't thinking of you, dear. Did you have a garden in Chicago, Mrs. Cooper? Huh? Oh, no. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. You come back here this minute or I'll put you in the closet again. Uh, would you uh, excuse me, please? Come on, Doctor. Come on. I suppose you've considered every angle of this. How do you mean? Well, there's always the possibility that they're trying to put something over on us. When I first examined her, she was actually suffering the same pains that Peggy suffered the night she fell down those stairs and died. Now, I don't think they're trying to put anything over on us. No, I guess you're right. It's so like her. Because I haven't told Mrs. Cooper yet I want the girl to stay here. If he does stay here, would it be bad for Martha? Hmm. Oh, might even do her good. Providing, of course, she doesn't get so emotionally involved with the girl that she can't let her go. She'll have to lose her eventually. Dr. Madison? I'll have a word with Martha. If she says yes, I'll not. Dr. Madison, this is Mrs. Cooper. Can anything be done for her? Anything? Perhaps. I certainly hope so. But it may mean you will have to make a great sacrifice. Oh, the money doesn't matter. No matter what it costs, I'll get the money somehow. I don't mean money, Ellie. What do you mean? You will have to let Ruth come and live here with the Perrys a while. You mean give her up? Just temporarily. But I, I can't tell you yet for how long. Oh, but I can't do that. You can't ask me to do that. Does that mean you know what's wrong with her? No, I don't, Ellie. But I think this may give us a chance to find out. I think it may help Ruth to get well. Can I live here with her? No, no, that wouldn't work. But you can visit her often. Will the Perrys take her? Are you sure? Quite sure, dear. I think you should be the one to tell us. Mrs. Cooper, let me tell her. Dear, will you come here? Now, how would you like to stay with us for a while? How tender it is. Darling, you frightened me. I oh, didn't hear you come I'm in. I'm sorry. sorry. Mother, who is she? Oh, she's the daughter of a classmate of your father. She seems so familiar. You've got a new hairdo, haven't you? Oh, yes. Do you like it? Yes, I do very much. Mother, could I have met her somewhere? No. No, you couldn't possibly have met her. Now, what have you got there, dear? What is this? Hmm? Oh, my what head. Oh, wait. I forgot. Let's see. There. What do you think? What is it? Oh, wait. It's for my birthday party next Wednesday. Now, Mother, I only want to invite my very best friends, you see, like Mary and Alice. Uh, what about Betty Hill? Do you think I ought to invite her, too? Well, dear, I think you, I think you should give it more thought. Now, why don't you go upstairs and... As soon as I finish the roses, I'll, I'll come up and help you plan. Oh, of course. I even forgot Joyce. I guess I'd better think about it for a while. Yes.
Dr. Madison, please. Is Martha Perry calling? Will, something dreadful has happened. Well, what is it, Martha? The girl. She wants to have a birthday party. What? She believes that next Wednesday is her birthday. Will, that's the exact date of Peggy's birthday, and she wants to invite all of Peggy's girlfriends. Oh, that is something. All those girls are grown women now. Alice Brown has two children, and Kay Scott is divorced, and Mary Brown is in Germany. Wait a minute, Martha. Peggy didn't have any friends in on a party on her 16th birthday. Joyce Martin came down with diphtheria. Peggy was exposed. Oh, that's, that's right. Why, Peggy was in quarantine at home. She may be able to recall it. We'll just have to take a chance. Be very careful what you say to her. Do you want me to handle it when I stop by tomorrow morning? No, I'll take care of it. I promise to help her plan. All right, be extremely careful. Well, I'm, I'm terribly worried. That night, 10 years ago, I... I know, Martha, I know. Good luck. And don't hesitate to call me at once if there's anything I can do. Thank you. Mother, look. You were right. Imagine my forgetting Virginia. Is that right now? Well, dear, it's a shame you can't invite Joyce. Why not, Mom? Well, Dr. Madison just phoned and said that Joyce came down with diphtheria today. Oh, no. Yes. Mother, I was with Joyce that last week. Does that mean that I've been exposed? Oh, I don't know, dear, but we'll... We'll ask Dr. Madison when he comes by in the morning. Oh. Well, if this means I can't have my birthday party... Oh, now, 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 dear. Even if you can't have girls your own age, well, we can plan some sort of a party. With who would come? Well, now, let me see. Dr. Madison would come. And then there's Mrs. Cooper. Mrs. Cooper? Yes, you like her, don't you? Well, yes, I like her, but... Mother, she's such a sad woman. She's always so unhappy and confused. She's very fond of you. Mother, maybe asking her to my party would make her happy. Why, of course it would, darling. Well, let's invite her then. Oh, you're a dear. Hello, Ira. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm late. I got held up in surgery. Well, you missed a very good dinner, which is just in time for the cake. How's everything going? Well, she's a remarkable child. There's no question of that. Martha's grown to love her, and, well, so have I. Good. Every time Martha sees those stairs, she thinks of Peggy falling. Hey, you've done wonders with her, Ira. Her happiness at this time is very important to her treatment. Even if she goes on believing that she's Peggy? No easy answer to that. It's a risk we have to take. Not easy for us. Ira! Ira! We're ready for the birthday cake. Oh, oh, Will, I'm so glad you could get here. Will, do you know, I think Peggy came back so that this time she could really have a happy birthday. Hi, Uncle Dar. Oh, hello, my dear. Happy birthday. Thank and you. many more of them. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you could come. <laughs> Why isn't this table beautiful? Do you like it? Miss. What happened? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Wendy. Happy birthday to you. It's the happiest birthday I've ever had. Now blow out the candle. Oh, but make a wish first, dear. There you are, girl. Two years. Of course, there's this. Oh, no. I will wait for that, dear. Oh, no, Mother. Please let me open it now. Oh, my darling, open it. Oh, it's beautiful. Do you like it? Oh, look. Darling. Oh, may I go right up and try it on? No, not upstairs, dear. No. Oh, why not? 
That'll be all right. Of course, go on up and try it on. Oh, thank you. Please forgive me. I must... I'll take her home. Be right back. It's all right, Ellie. I'll take you home. Well... I'm terribly worried about Martha. So am I. We've got a problem on our hands. I don't know how much longer I can go on with this. That girl is still convinced that she's Peggy, and poor Martha is beginning to believe that it's really true. I've got to do something right away. I'll be back as soon as I can. No. No, Peggy, no. Oh, Mother, what's the matter? I just want to show Uncle Dar my ballerina. No! No, Peggy, no. Stay there. Don't come down. But I've got to come down. Stay up there. Oh, no. Peggy. Why? Why? Peggy. Peggy. You scared me. I almost fell. But you're all right. You didn't hurt yourself, though, did you? But you yelled at me and Mother screamed. Why did she Green. She was afraid you were going to fall. Ira, get Dr. Madison. Martha. Please, get Dr. Madison quickly before she dies. I'm not going to die. I'm not. I'm not. Oh. oh. The ballerina just broke. Peggy loved it so. Sitting with us, friends of your mother. Now let's go home and give her a surprise. How could Ruth assume the identical personality of the Perry's daughter, whom she had never met? and even know the name of her dog and of her friends. Was it because the spirit of the dead girl did take possession of Ruth during her fantastic experience? Well, these are questions for which, with all our knowledge, we have no sure answers. What do you think? <laughs>